like to call to order the Harrison County Board of Education. This is considered a special meeting this evening. Let's start out with our Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Miss Asher. I thought so, but I wouldn't share. Yeah. I've got a few slides here, but okay. most of the information, I think you all got in your pockets with uh, all the information the department sends us each year when they certify those rates. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because we've talked a lot about taxes over the last year, and, and you all are, I know, are well informed, but. Um, Go to that next slide, Richard. These are the certified rates that we got from KPE, of course, the compensating rate, uh, and then the subsection one rate and a four percent increase rate. We currently have a rate of 51.7 cents as our base rate. Um, go to that next slide, Richard. These are the assessments on real property in the county. So you can see we are having a little bit of growth. Um, the last four years, uh, I talked with Pat Darnell, UVA, and the way they have always done it in Harrison County, they've done it by category of, of property. So farmland, uh, residential uh, property in city limits one year, and the next year was residential property outside city limits. So this is the last year that it's going to be like that. From this point on, it's going to be more just four quadrants of the county. So it's going to even things out a little bit with the growth, hopefully, um, you know, where we don't go for 1% one, one year up to 3% another year. But I feel like that'll be better for for us. Uh, and, and I do feel like, you know, and I know Dr. Birch had studied this and talked to a lot of people about this, and you all are aware of this too, but hopefully we are, we are set for a little bit of growth in the county. So that's a good thing. Um, with that being said, if you go to that next one, Richard, Again, uh, the, the tax rate that was levied by the board back in fiscal year 20 was 51.7 cents. And fiscal year 21, we did the same thing again. And this year, uh, that is our proposal that we keep the 51.7 cents, the base rate. But we will add to that the 6 cents that was approved back in May for the uh, construction for the facility. So to make our total rate uh, 57.7, but it is the same base rate that we've had for the last two years. So no increase on that rate. Uh, and that's what the last yeah, slide shows as well. So that is uh, my recommendation. We, you know, the little bit of growth that we do get, we need to keep up with the constant rise in, in everything that we do, whether it be utilities or whatever, everything goes up every year. So that little bit of growth uh, if we keep the same rate, hopefully we'll help cover those increases. Um, I don't really have anything else unless you all have questions. Okay. Dr. Burchett, you want to say anything? No, Ms. Asher is exactly right. It, it does keep the base rate at the same rate it has been for the, this is the third year in a row. And we worked really hard and keep in mind when we did our presentations back on the nickel facilities investment uh, piece of this. Um, the efforts that the district had made to bring in outside monies through grants and, and cost savings reductions and other things, that's been able to allow us to be in this position. So we're excited about that, um, to be able to be able to recommend to the board that we keep that base at 51.7. Of course, we do have to add the six cent recallable nickel, which has already been passed and, and passed mm -hmm. by the recall, the opposition time of that nickel. It is already in, in force and in effect. So uh, we will report to KDE a, a total rate of 57.7 if the board approves uh, keeping the base at 51.7. Okay. Any questions or comments? Move approval. Second. I, I don't think we're what? at that point no. just yet. We, no. we, we do have a, a point for the opportunity for public comment. Oh, I'll I'm sorry. There. Any public comment?
Okay. Absent any public comment, we would be able to move on yes, to the next so. Consideration to grant approval for the Harrison County Board of Education to approve the physical year 2022 tax rates as follows. Real property, 57.7 cents, 51.7 cents base plus 6.0 cents for community facility investment approved by the board on 5-27-21. Personal property, 57.7 cents, 51.7 cents base rate plus 6%, 6 cents for community facility improvement. And then the motor vehicles remains at 50 cents. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Motion second. made by Mr. Taylor and second by Ms. Hatterick. All in favor say yes. 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 <coughs> Excuse me. All opposed say no. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda this evening is consideration grant approval to adopt the resolution authorizing COVID-19 related leave. Dr. Burchett. Um, as you know, uh, I've, I've made the board aware, the uh, State Board of Education um, approved an emergency regulation earlier this year uh, providing for uh, what they call quarantine COVID relief. So if you're in quarantine, and it's got stipulations, so you had to be vaccinated um, or be medically exempt from the vaccine and other things but if you if you were required to be quarantined as long as you met the stipulations of the regulation you were eligible for up to 10 days of quarantine relief um, leave uh, a lot of districts are uh, taking that a step further and providing sick leave uh, as related to covid uh, in, to help their employees in this event because what happened with that other relief leave um, package from the state it, it only served at the time when you were quarantined. Once you became sick, so if you had a positive diagnosis, then you were classified as sick, the quarantine leave no longer applied, and then you would have had to shift over to your personal sick leave if available. Well, we've got, you know, a lot of new employees who have uh, at, at the maximum 10 sick days. Um, it's extremely hard and difficult to navigate this especially from no fault of their own from receiving COVID uh, somewhere along the way, possibly in school, possibly in the community, um, and to be able to navigate this without some extra re relief. Um, and so my proposal is a resolution authorizing um, COVID-19 related sick leave, CRSL, and it, it follows the same criteria as the state regulation on quarantine leave, and that is that um, the employee has received an FDA-approved COVID vaccine or otherwise exempt from the vaccine. Employee is subject to federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation orders related to COVID-19. The employee has been advised by a health care provider to self-quarantine because of COVID-19. The employee is caring for a minor child subject to or advised to a quarantine, as described above, or other emergency or extraordinary nature uh, reasons approved by the superintendent or designee. Um, I would recommend that we uh, adopt this resolution uh, on behalf of our employees who are working extremely hard in the most difficult of environment to provide in person, ongoing in person learning for our students. Um, I can tell you we are right at the very cliff of, of, um, of something, uh, of not being able to operate in person due to staff absences and unavailability of substitutes in all positions, be it transportation, food service, uh, uh, classroom teacher, regardless of the position, we are in, operating on a very, very tight leash. And um, we're going to have to make an adjustment, try to get some relief on that. Hopefully, we hear that the legislature is going to come into special session to help provide um, some extra relief options for districts to be able to help navigate the pandemic. The goal is to maintain in-person learning as much as possible, five days a week as much as possible, but we, it's very likely we'll have to take some targeted interventions to lower the rate, reduce the amount of quarantines and positive cases in the community uh, in our schools and in our staff so that we can continue having in-person learning. And that's, and that's the goal. So uh, I would recommend that the board, you had this leave policy before you, this resolution on this leave policy before you, I'd recommend that you approve that. And then there's a second one to follow that we'll talk about after that. Any questions or comments? Do I hear a motion to approve uh, approval to adopt a resolution authorizing COVID-19 related leave? So move. 
Motion made by Ms. Brunker and second by Ms. Hatterick. All in favor say yes. 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 <clears throat> All opposed say no. Okay, thank you so much. Next item on the agenda this evening is consideration to grant approval to adopt a resolution authorizing COVID-19 related non-contract days. So, Dr. Um, I, I know that in, in speaking with you all individually about this <clears throat> issue, it, it came up of the, the option. Of course, the previous leave policy requires uh, the vaccination. We're, our community, our district, I'm proud to say that we're over 75% vaccinated um, as a district as a whole. Um, that's, a, that's a good number compared to other districts, um, but we can do better. And, uh, and I hope that that last policy encourages maybe some more of that the vaccination now that the vaccine is, is, has been approved by the FDA, FDA and the emergency authorization has been removed from that approval. Um, but in addition to that, to take into consideration those of our employees who, uh, who have yet to vaccine, vaccinate or uh, may be adverse to vaccination for some reason, uh, they still may be in a position where they have to isolate or quarantine. Um, and up until this point, no one who has been employed by the Harrison County School System, or to, for that matter that I know of anybody in the state of Kentucky, has had to go without pay. Uh, they have been able to perform their duties even though that has been in a, in a capacity that has been adjusted. Um, but they've been able to complete their contracts and, and have their full pay throughout this time. So what this would do is this, this resolution authorizes the superintendent, and I believe I can do it regardless, but um, authorizes the superintendent to um, allow non-contract days in the event of a COVID-related emergency so that then an employee could make up that time at a later date. Mm -hmm. If they weren't able to perform their functions or job duties on a particular day and it's COVID-related and it's verified by that for that reason by a medical provider uh, or the health department, then um, we, uh, we could extend a non-contract day for that day and allow that employee to make that date, that time up, be it in summer school or uh, some other day other than that regular instructional day. And that's exactly what this resolution says. So. Any questions or comments? Move approval. Motion made by Mr. Taylor. Second. Second by Mr. Sparks. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Okay. Dr. Burchett, is there anything you would like to add? Uh, this is I, I would just say that we are in a, um, a critical point right now. Um, our, our number of cases internal to the district uh, and, and to the community, uh, both cases and, and quarantines, are escalating and rising um, really at an unprecedented pace. I think we dipped back down just a little bit yesterday over the previous day but um, <clears throat> our trajectory continues to rise um, on a whole and so we we are evaluating a targeted approach to get some relief and intervention from that any approach that we take will be short term and targeted just for that purpose so we can get some of our employees back able to be back in work and so we can operate and fully function in person five days a week and that's the that's the strategy and the plan um, at, through a uh, team meeting with a uh, leadership team here in this office, as well as school level leadership to uh, ensure that we can maintain long-term in-person learning. We might have to take some short-term interventions, okay? And we will be announcing more on that uh, later this evening. Okay. Anybody have any comments they'd like to make? I just would like to thank you all. I just can't imagine what you're going through on a daily basis. And when I say daily, I don't mean normal working hours. You all are working around the clock trying to keep kids in school and keep them safe and healthy. And we just appreciate it so much. These are unprecedented times. And who would have thought last year when we were talking about this that we would still be dealing with it? And when you stop and think about last year what a crisis it was, but now we have more cases, more people hospitalized, more people on ventilators. It's just unbelievable. And thank you for your dedication. And I hope you all stay healthy. And uh, we just move forward as a community and try to keep each other safe. So thank you so much. If there are no other questions or comments, do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Taylor. Second. Second by Mr. Sparks. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Thank you so much. Thank you.